Welcome to MMA Play 365. I'm Newsom and I'm here to give you a Bayes AI recap from our UFC prediction software from last weekend's UFC event at UFC Kansas City. Again, just like most weeks, it's filled with some value spots, some solid picks, solid winners, but also these recaps are very good for directing people of how to use Bayes AI. And listen, there's so many ways that you can use Bayes AI, so many different ways you can use the results and the percentages that we give because we give percentage likelihood probabilities for every single fight and every single outcome apart from a DQ and a no contest for obvious reasons. So there's so many different ways you can use the numbers from a betting perspective. But in regards to the value and the solid winners and how the implied probabilities work compared to the percentages that Bayes AI is giving out, these recaps can provide insight and ideas in how to use Bayes AI from a betting perspective to make yourself some money. So yeah, we're going to start with the value section from UFC Kansas City. Now, the value section normally is an incorrect prediction from Bayes AI that has been a very close. It could be like a 51% versus a 49%. The 49% fighter might have been a plus 200 underdog and won the fight. So that's an example of what value normally is. However, for the first particular fight, this is actually for the first time, I think, a value spot that I'm labeling in the value rather than not a solid winner because we've got Jocelyn Edwards versus Lucy Pudlova. Jocelyn Edwards was unbelievably fortunate to get the win shall we say you know it was as close to a robbery as it gets it was quite a bad decision in my opinion and i didn't see a single person twitter commentator analyst i haven't seen anybody or heard anybody disagree that jocelyn edwards should have lost that fight so yeah that's why it's in the value section even though Beze i did actually favor it to win it was a fortunate win but a win nonetheless now, Bayes AI had Jocelyn Edwards to win at 54%. Odds implied on 54% is minus 117. So, Bayes AI was basically saying that it should be just outside of a pick -em, a very, very slight lean on Jocelyn Edwards to win the fight. But at minus 117, odds implied at the bookies, you could have got anywhere between plus 120 to plus 150, depending on where you bet it or when you bet it throughout the week. But ultimately, Bayes AI was saying that there should have been a minus in front of the odds. Instead, at the bookies, you're getting a plus in front of the odds. So that's the first telltale sign of some good value. Now, the other area where Bayes AI predicted was it actually favoured Edwards to win via decision. So Bayes AI was basically saying if Edwards does win, it's more likely to be a decision, which is exactly how it played out. It was a, a split decision win. Now, Bayes AI gave that decision 29%. So it was basically saying for Edwards to win by decision, the likelihood is 29%. Odds implied at 29% though is plus 245. Yes, it's a high number, but you know you are picking a specific method of victory and all the factors of a knockout and submission and any crazy finish happening is all factored in but at plus 245 odds implied the odds at the book is around plus 200 so there was no value in that decision so again this is another way where you can you know have a look at a fight look at the numbers of Bayes AI and figure where the value is and what the best bet is so actually if you were looking at Bayes AI and you thought you know what I do want to bet Jocelyn Edwards I like this fight you're looking at the money line straight up Edwards to win at 54 percent and you're seeing some value there but then you're looking into the decision and you're not seeing value there. So the right bet to take, even though the bigger ticket is Edwards' decision, the right bet to take from a value perspective is just Edwards outright at plus 150 or plus 120 because that's where the discrepancy is between the, impi the implied probability from Bayes AI's percentages to the bookies' odds. So yeah, look, that's a good example, a really good example of how to use Bayes AI right there. The next fight in the value section, and again, we are moving back now to a fight that Bayes AI did pick incorrectly, but the odds were that close that provided a tremendous amount of value, and that's exactly what we have here. We've got Pedro Munoz versus Chris Gutierrez. Now, Pedro Munoz was my, the handicapper dog of the week at MMA Play 365. It's like a $1.99 package. You get my favorite underdog. You get Bayes AI's biggest underdog, and if both of them lose, we give you your money back anyway. So Pedro Munoz, although I didn't bet him, I didn't really like a lot of dogs last week apart from Kutalaba who I bet as a dog but then obviously he moved into a favorite but I'm digressing but yeah Pedro Munoz 
the value side here, absolutely. Base AI was saying that Munoz had a 45% chance to win. So it was saying that Chris Gutierrez should be rightly favoured. And at 45%, the odds implied on that is plus 122. So Base AI is saying that it thinks that, and it agrees with Munoz being an underdog. But Pedro Munoz was actually anywhere from plus 170 to plus 200. So again, you're looking at the, if you're playing it from a value perspective, Baze AI is saying this fighter should be plus 122, but the bookies are saying, well, we'll give you plus 200. There's value there. So if you are playing the value side, and if you did like Munoz, and you did like the discrepancy between the odds implied from Baze AI's percentages to where the bookies are actually giving you those odds, then it would have been a really good play. So yeah, Pedro Munoz, although Beza I did pick against him technically, there's a lot of value there when you really dig into the numbers and start comparing it to the odds that the book is. And the final fighter to talk about from the value perspective, and this might be the first time that we've had what we call a gem in the value section. So the gem is the fighter win, the inside the distance, a specific method of victory, then a specific method of victory plus round. So bear with me here, yeah? We've got Edson Barboza versus Billy Quarantillo. Now, Beze, I did pick against Barboza, so we've got to make that clear. But at 46%, Beze, I is saying that, our, that Barboza should be a plus 117 underdog. But Barbosi could have had plus 150, plus 140, a little bit lower at some books. So you could have had up to plus 150 on Barbosa. Again, when Beze AI is saying that he should be around a plus 117 favourite. So it's pretty much a coin flip just with an edge on, a slight edge on to Billy Quarantillo. So betting Edson Barbosa's money line straight up, there was value on it when Beze AI is giving you the percentage, the implied probability over to where the bookies are offering the odds. But then we go one step further, so Barboza to win inside the distance. Now, to get this percentage, you just add up the KOTKO percentage with this submission percentage, and you get inside the distance. A bookie will throw in a DQ as well, normally with inside the distance. But Barboza to win inside the distance, it was 28%. Odds implied at 28% is plus 257. You could have actually got plus 300 to plus 350. Obviously, Barboza knocked Billy Quarantillo out, so that would have cashed as well. Now we go again, one step further. Barboza to win by KOTKO specifically, 26%. Now note the percentages, there's only 2% difference between a Barboza inside the distance and a Barboza KOTKO, which states that the submission is a relatively low percentage to the point of you're thinking, well, am I going to get much more value for my money by just going straight KOTKO because it's unlikely that Barboza is going to submit Quarantillo. So at 26%, the odds implied is plus 285. You could have got a plus 400 line. So yes, now you are. For that X, for that 2% drop, you're now getting a much better bet in line and much more value. So the KOTKO is the better bet over inside the distance. But then we finish it off going one step further. Barboza to win by KOTKO in round one specifically. Now that percentage, base AI, had at 19%. So you might be thinking, well, this is just a ridiculously low percentage. And you're right, it is. But you're, you've got to consider that for 19%, you've got to get the fighter correct. You've got to get the method of victory correct. Then you've got to get the method of victory and the round correct as well. It's never going to be a high percentage. But again, look deeper into the numbers. What does 19% mean? It means that the odds implied should be plus 426. So it should be a 4 to 1 ticket. But at the bookies, they're offering you plus 900. It was nearly a 10 to 1 ticket that the bookies were offering on something that Beza AI is saying should be plus 426. So you've got an insane amount of value there. So that one normally, Barboza KOTKO round one would be a much smaller bet. Somebody that just wanted to, you know, try and win a million dollars off like a 10 leg parlay with that included type of bet. But nonetheless, it's providing insane value. So although, again, we circle back to the start, although Barboza was favored to lose, there's so much value just by looking into some of these numbers. And Barboza, of course, did not Billy Quarantillo out in round one. So all of them across the board had a lot of value and they were all going to be cash tickets whichever way that you bet Barboza. And again, if you entered in from a value perspective, you'd have made 
a lot of money or I'd, I'd assume you'd have made a lot of money from that fight. Now we're moving quickly into the solid winner section. We've got two fighters to talk about here. The first one, Daniel Zellhuber versus Lando Venata. Daniel Zellhuber to win. Beze I had at 58%. Odds implied at 58% is minus 138. You could have bet Zellhuber from anywhere from minus 130 down to minus 120. Again, depending on when you bet Zellhuber throughout fight week. So there was some value there. Not a tremendous amount, but value nonetheless. So you've got a percentage that's quite high. Beze I is normally quite confident around the 60% mark and yeah you've got the odds to match that as well so there's no reason at all that you know there should have been much hesitation and you know there was value on the on the bookies odds compared to where Bayes AI was saying that the implied probability was as well so yeah Zell Huber a solid winner for sure next one this one's a good one actually we've got Azamat Mirzakhanov versus Dustin Jacoby I was very close to betting just in the Dustin Jacoby I like him as a fighter I really didn't see Mirzakhanov winning this fight outside of a knockout I thought if it goes to a decision Jacoby's gonna have it all day went to a decision Mirzakhanov won Bayes AI had Mirzakhanov to win at 60 percent so 60% odds implied is minus 150. So basically, Beze AI is saying, look, Mirzakhanov should be a slight to moderate favourite against Dustin Jacoby. But he wasn't, he was an underdog. Now, if you bet him early in the week, you'd have got plus 170. He ended up settling at around plus 140. But still, even at that lowest line of plus 140, you're still betting on a fighter that Beze AI is saying should be minus 150. So there's an insane amount of value there. Mirza kind of won a unanimous decision. That was probably one of the best predictions on the entire event for Beze AI. A really, really solid one. It's nice to have a, a slight to moderate favourite being backed at the bookies as an underdog yeah it's uh it's, it's really good and again just studying the numbers and looking at Mirza Kanov being favored at around that 60 percent which Beze is normally like I said with Zell Huber is normally confident around 60 percent and then getting plus money on it really really solid and finally every now and again we'll get a bad loss one that I look at and think yeah I don't quite agree with that with how high the percentage is and one that kind of plays out like that and Beze AI hasn't been on the ball with that particular fight and fighter it doesn't happen often maybe once every three or four events but you know we did have one from the last event so we've got Gillian Robertson versus Pierre Rodriguez now Robertson to win was 39% so Pierre Rodriguez was 61% didn't play out at all like that Robertson looked like she should have been up in the 70% never mind not favoured down at 39%. Now at 39%, Beze I was saying that Robertson should have been a plus 156 underdog. She opened up plus 115, the line flipped to minus 130. So again, there's no value there anyway. So I'm hoping that, you know, anybody that is playing for value would have looked at Robertson at 39% and thought, you know what, there's no value there. They're saying she should be plus 156. I'm getting minus money. Why would I want to bet that? You know, the value is not there. So I'm hoping that's the way people looked at it. However, what is ironic about this so-called bad loss from Bayes AI is you could have actually found some value in it because Robertson to win by submission, she's a grappler. We all know that the majority of her wins do come by submission. So Robertson to win by a submission was at 30% by Bayes AI. Now at 30%, odds implied there's plus 233. You could have got plus 250 or plus 260 at the bookies. So actually you could have found some value in the bad loss. So again, this is what I mean with Bayes AI. Although Gillian Robertson, that outright prediction at 39% was bad you could have still found some value on her and better there wasn't a ton of value but it was value nonetheless on that submission prop so yeah a bad loss but with some value within the numbers as well always worth having a look when you're looking at the overall predictions from Bayes AI, dig a little bit deeper, have a look at the methods of victory, the inside, the distance, have a look at the rounds and see what you can find. But that's all for this recap. Again, I hope I provided some nice insight, not only to the recap itself, but also how to use Bayes AI. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Newsom. I'll be back again next week for the recap for UFC Vegas 71, which is headlined by Sergey Pavlovich and Curtis Blades.